The issue of resilience comes up powerfully when we are faced with extreme situations. Situations for which we have at little or no occasion to develop adaptive mechanisms. How does our psyche withstand such outrageous attacks as war, criminal violation, brutality, and even life-threatening illness? What impact do such experiences have on our trust in Jesus, on our security, and our belief in our value as human beings? Why do some individuals, whether adults or children, live through such extreme traumatic experiences, with their spirit relatively intact, while others are permanently damaged? The resilience of the human spirit means being able to cope with adversity, while being able to not only accept what has happened, but also continue forth with the ability to find some form of happiness. Some people survive a situation physically, but their spirit is broken, and they are living within a shell, simply existing. Others, not only survive in body, but also with meaning in their lives, that goes beyond the necessities of survival. Narcissists want to destroy the resilience of the human spirit. They need victims to voluntarily give up faith in Jesus, and therefore salvation. By doing this, they keep on harvesting souls for Satan. Please understand the scope of narcissism is strictly connected with the occult. This is the reason, you need to realize, you are dealing with a spiritual warfare issue. There is substantial gaslight, by the Antichrist followers, to persuade you to steer away from Jesus, and from salvation. They know Jesus can save you, and they desperately try to persuade you, to voluntarily give up Jesus and salvation, so that they can snatch your soul to their master. Spiritual Protection as a young child, I did not understand why so many people wanted to harm me. I did have a vague understanding that this was because I was something labeled a scapegoat and that my parents had believed in the wrong God. The solution to this problem was to believe in Jesus, to pray for his protection. I came to feel that I had a protector and that I discovered Jesus would set things straight, would intervene on my behalf and save me. This spiritual sense of safety protected me from the everyday terrors that were all around me. I now understand the extraordinary power of Jesus. This is not a matter of religious beliefs, but of a spiritual and a personal relationship I have established with Jesus. This protection was psychologically real and not an illusion. Do not need narcissists break your spirit and destroy the resilience of your spirit. You can empower your resilience by your faith in Jesus. This situation in our world will intensify narcissists' attempts to destroy the resilience of your spirit because they know their wickedness is about to face God's judgment. After experiencing the twists and turns of these days, I have understood some truths and gained some discernment about the schemes carried out by narcissists in the spiritual world. All of these are the most precious wealth God has granted me. In retrospect, it is Jesus' hand that has led me along the way. Thank God, for allowing me to hear his voice, and return before him. All the glory, is to Almighty Jesus. Amen. If you're listening to this video and feel this channel has helped you with truthful information, please help me to keep on producing videos with your contribution by clicking on the PayPal, or the Patreon link, available in the description below. God bless you. Please, remember. Truth is freedom. God's not interested in giving you faith just over one experience. Where you come through one crisis and, and you say, Oh, thank God, I had faith, I got through it. Yes, you got through the first one. That was the first one, that's the Red Sea. And there are others that come behind it. It may not be the same kind, it'll be a different kind of a test. But he's not looking for situational faith, he's looking for a lifestyle. He's looking for hearts that are totally at rest. Come what may, my God is faithful. Come what may, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. For we which do believe, enter into rest. You go into rest by simple childlike faith. When you make a commitment to believe God, and not doubt him in any situation. There has to come a time when all the whys, why God, are gone.
until all those questions are gone. You say, I have a loving father. I stand here and rest, boasting only in the word of God and in his Holy Spirit that he's been faithful to give rest and peace to my soul. For he that has entered into his rest has also ceased from his own works as God did from his. In other words, you're not trying to be brave in the face of trouble, you're not trying to pump up some phony acceptance of your trial, no more worry about whether you're going to have strength to endure. Oh, folks, don't worry about whether when hard times come, you're being tested, whether you're going to faint or you're going to stand. Don't worry about that. Let me tell you why I seek God every day diligently in prayer. Let me tell you why I'm into this book every day devouring it. Let me tell you why I fast regularly. Not because I have to preach in this pulpit. Not because I'm a minister called to preach. It's not only for fellowship. It's not only for getting to know his ways. It's beyond that. The reason I go into this book, the reason I seek him, in spite of all the victories and deliverance I've seen, and the peace and the rest that he's given to me, I know there's a warfare. I know there's a battle. And I know the devil's not going to let go. He's not going to rest as long as I'm seeking God. Now, if I quit seeking God, he'll give me peace, probably let me alone. But if you're going to seek God, you're going to go all the way with the Lord. You're going to be tested. You're going to be tried. You're going to be in a warfare till the day you die. He's going to test and test until when you stand before Jesus, you're going to shine. Your faith is going to shine like gold, more precious than gold. But the reason I do it because I want to be a prepared soldier. I know, I know, I know that you don't win the battle on the battlefield. I know that you don't go in unprepared. If you're just a soldier and you haven't been to boot camp and you haven't been tested and tried, if you haven't been put through it, and the enemy suddenly pounces on you, you are not ready. There's no ammunition backup. There's no soldiers behind you. You're all alone there because you are not prepared. I go into this book and that's why it's important. After every victory that you see in your life, that's the time to press in and get ready. Folks, every good report I hear, I go to my face before God. And so, oh God, I know that when I'm praying, I know that when I'm in your word, I know that when I'm fasting, you're giving me spiritual authority over the power of the enemy. And I know that you're building up reservoir in me of confidence in you. I'm getting to know your ways. I'm getting to know who you are and how you act and what you do. I'm getting to know you. Now, I may not feel that I am learning anything. I may not feel that spiritual power. I may not see that reservoir. But folks, the next time the enemy comes, the next time I'm in a crisis, the next time I face a calamity, I'm going to have reserves. I'm going to have resources I can draw on because I have won the battle alone with God. That God doesn't waste his word. He had a reason for bringing this. And he wants to get at the doubt in you lovingly and pluck it out. Because he says, I've been trying to do a work in you and for you, but I can't do it because of your unbelief and your doubt. Doubts have crept in. Some fear has crept in because wherever there's doubt, fear is going to trail right in. Doubt and fear are twins. And if you've been doubting God, maybe you've been praying for something and you haven't seen it happen, he's looking for those who will trust him before the sons of men. Trusting him on the job, trusting him before your family, Trusting him before all the powers of hell. Saying, God, I trust you. And before all the witnesses and glory in heaven. Lord, help me to trust you. God, you're going to see me through. You'll see my family through. You're going to be faithful because you are loving God. You're going to bring me out with victory. You're going to bring me out with a song. 